Greetings, my sister, and how are you? I'm very well. Thanks so much once again for making Great. time for us here on Maranatha Drive. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm well, and uh, greetings to our listeners. I hope they are well as well. Yes. So we're yeah. talking uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Yes. What a powerful scripture, a scripture that's written to people who had fallen, people who were dealing with guilt, a people that felt that they had let down God because they killed Christ. And the whole book is written to Hebrews, can you imagine, to the Jews, to those who say they are Hebrews, they are of the descendant of Abraham, those who are living as descendants of someone who carries the oracles of God. Those who used to say there's no better birth than to be born a Jew. Those who should have known better what the law of God says, and they are a product of the covenant of God, and the whole nation of the Hebrews are a people that God has cho had chosen for himself and had set aside for great works. But the truth of the matter is that they had rejected Christ. And so the letter of Hebrews is written to them as a plea by Paul to this nation to tell them that, no, 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 the same Christ that you killed is actually in heaven. And he is interceding as the author and the finisher of our faith. And that this Christ is the one that we must confess and we must leave and that we must be converted from our old ways, which were symbols of what was coming, and that Christ is the ultimate promise of God. And, and, and he outlines even people that had lived in the Hebraic time, uh, in the old times, that many of them might think that they were the heroes of their faith. If you read the whole chapter 11, uh, he explains that Hebrews are people of faith. They believe in God regardless of what they go through. They don't forsake Yahweh. They still hold on to, to him regardless of what happens. So when you, when you then read it in the context of Hebrews chapter 11, that's why chapter 12 starts by saying, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily besets us or ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne room of God. Verse 3 then says, For consider him who endured the hostility from sinners against himself, lest you be weary and discouraged in your souls. Because verse 4 says, You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Have you forgotten the exhortation that was spoken, that you are sons? And it says, it quotes here from the Old Testament and says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and he scourges every son whom he receives. So the point really that I think today I want our listeners to remember is that whatever you are going through, you are not the first one and you will not be the last one. That's why he starts the book by saying, therefore, it's a conclusion. Having seen what happened to those who lived in the past, and he says, time does not allow me to tell you about Gideon and Barak of Simon, of Samson and Japheth, and of David and of Samuel and the prophets who subdued kingdoms by their faith, worked righteousness, 
obtained the promises. Some of them even stopped the mouths of lions. Some of them quenched the fires of violence. And, and, and it says they escaped the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They became valiant in battle and turned to to tend armies to fly and to flee away from them. And it says even women received their dead, raised again to life. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance they, that they might obtain a better resurrection. I mean, he lists and lists and lists. He says still others had trials, they had mockings, they had scourgings. Yes, some of them were in chains in prison. They were stoned, they were sworn into two. Some of them were tempted, some were slain, some were slaughtered by the slow sword. They wandered in sheep skins and goat skins, being destitute, afflicted and tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and in caves of the earth. And it says finally on chapter 11, all these have obtained a good testimony through faith. Do, and it says some of them did not even receive the promise, but God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect outside or without us. So today as we read this chapter, I want to tell someone out there on chapter 12 that you are not the first one to suffer what you are suffering. And you will not be the last. But let me assure you, there are others before who suffered the same, but they counted all their pain as the Hebrew word or the Greek word says skubala, meaning I count all things as human dung. I might as well just lose even my own life. They did not count their lives worthy. But they believed even if they were slain, just like Job says, I would rather believe in me even though he slays me. I want to tell our listeners, someone out there needs to hear this. Uh-huh. Your trial is not the end result. God is testing your faith. Hey. Your test is what will give you your testimony. Amen. Your pain right now, your crucible you're facing right now, God would want to make sure you are purified by the test and you know him not by being told, by by personal experience when you see him deliver you out of your situation. I want to tell someone out there who is struggling. Let me tell you this. Hebrews says we must lay aside every weight. Let me tell you, my sister, sometimes God does it in a brutal way. I don't know if you have watched the guys who cut trees, when they cut the trees. Uh-huh. When they come with their hacksaws, it's a very noisy environment. Bzzz, right. and, 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 and they cut this branch clean. A huge branch with lots of leaves. It's because they want the tree to be pruned and to grow in a certain direction and to be fruitful tomorrow. I was studying a a science of how to grow tomatoes recently and I realized not every branch that comes out of the tomato must be retained. Some of them you must cut them out because they take away from the fruitfulness of the main plant. We call them amakagela. God prunes you by trials. And I've often told someone out there that sometimes your salvation is as close as one big embarrassment. You need that scandalous deal you did at your workplace to be exposed so that God will force you to come on your knees and repent. For some of us, it's the adultery we've been involved in that God will expose us and bring us in our shame to the cross. For some of us, it will be the loss of employment because we've been stealing from work. Some of you will have to be accused and convicted of your sins. That's why the Bible says we must lay aside every weight and the sin that easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance. The way of a Christian who is awaiting the coming of Christ is not a sprint, my sister. 
The verse says it's an endurance race. It means come rain, you will keep running. Come sunshine, you will keep running. Come darkness, you keep running. I think it was Charles Spurgeon who says, trusting God in the afternoon means nothing. It is at night that faith in God is tested. Can you still walk by faith? Because Hebrews 11 is of people who walked by faith regardless of circumstances. They trusted God and some of them for decades, they waited for the promises of God in pain and in embarrassment. They waited until God gave them the promise. Are you prepared in the darkest hour of your night to still walk are you prepared to still look at Jesus? Because for some of us, my sister, we are no longer waiting for him to come. We are no longer looking unto Jesus. We are looking unto our insurance policies. We are looking into our marriages and our husbands. We are looking into our children who are now very successful. We are looking into our profiles and our bio summaries that speaks volume about who we are. We no longer look at Christ and him crucified the cross of Christ no longer means much to many people who still confess to be Christians today. They would rather have that Christ who blesses them. We live in times when Christianity is not about receiving but giving. We live in times when Christianity, you don't claim the blessing of God, but you claim the name of God over you. We are living in a time of so much selfishness that we no longer look to Christ, but we look to the blessings that he gives as the signs and tokens of our blessedness. But the Bible says, look to Jesus. Let me tell someone out there who's asking, but why me? Why am I in this situation right now? Let me tell you, none of us, this is a fact, none of us decided to be born Nature conspired with all the forces and the behaviors of our parents right. to cause us to be conceived and to be born. None of us decided, now I want to be born. None of us applied to home affairs to be born. <laughs> our deliverance from the womb, as a health professional, I can tell you, as a public health specialist, the chances of you surviving in your mother's womb where one in a million times you should have been aborted because the environment in the womb is such an aggressive environment. The sperm that conceived you had to fight against all odds to reach that egg, to get you fertilized. Your DNA, which is unique to yourself, against the billions that lived before and the billions that will live in the future, there will be never someone like you. Jesus oversaw you're being born. He says to Jeremiah, I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's home. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. You are mine. I set you aside before you were born. What am I saying? Jesus is claiming you as his own. Your very own essence of life is his. He is the one who decided and determined that you should be in the situation that you are in. He allowed it for the greater purpose that his name may be glorified. He is the author. And he will finish this thing. I pray that someone will not rob Christ of the glory he deserves in our stories. Let's not take the glory from Christ. Because he's going to make it. He's going to do it. Your situation, my, my listener, my dear brother, my sister, your scandalous story requires the scandalous grace of God to save Amen. you. Amen. There is nothing that can stop Christ from saving you regardless of your situation. He is the author and he is the finisher. Therefore, what attitude? I want to finish with this one and then we pray with our listeners. What attitude must we carry as we see ourselves in the scandalous situations we are in and the big embarrassment that we've got ourselves into, what is the attitude we must have? Verse 2 says, it says as we, we must look to Christ Jesus. Yes. We are living in times when many of us are trusting our bank accounts and our lawyers and our financial people and our institutions and our education to fight our battles. That may give you temporary success, but you will never be happy. You will never be satisfied. Yeah. 
You may win the case and walk away with murder, but that won't be enough to give you peace in your heart. The Bible says today the best way to fight our battles, to overcome our circumstances, is when we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And this is how Jesus did it. The Bible says he endured the cross. If you want to be a patient person, how, what is the best way to be made patient? Is it not to be given a circumstance that would test your patience? Then we can know you are patient. That's why you have the trial you have right now, to prove that you can be a person who endures. What about the shame that comes with the trial we sometimes go through? My sister, when, when you are fired from work and your story is in the newspapers, or when you are caught out, and everyone is on social media tweeting about your life. Uh. How do you handle the shame that comes with it? Because the Bible says Jesus despised the shame. Don't embrace the negative character that people are, pro pro are, are portraying of you out there. That's not you. That's the other person they think you are, but you are not the one. So... Let your actions and your speech show that you despise the character that people are calling you. Uh. And let God be the one to vindicate you. Because in the case of Christ, on Friday, they nailed him. On Friday, he was the villain guy who was supposed to be killed. On Friday, they were smearing at him and accusing him of all things. And they were nailing him and they killed him on Friday. But Sunday was coming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sunday was coming that God did something that not even the soldiers who were standing by the tomb could hold the power of God when it was manifested in Christ. Uh. I don't know what has died in your life, my listener. I don't know what has been buried and has been codroned by the soldiers in your life. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your health. I want you to believe that resurrection is coming. Uh -huh. I want you to believe that God can actually give you the resurrection in this life. Sunday is coming. And, and, and the Bible says we must consider Christ carefully because Christ endured the hostility that sinners were throwing at him. Lest uh -huh. we become weary and discouraged in our walk. So today... I want to pray with someone who says, Melusi, I have considered the wrong places and the wrong people. I am looking at what people are saying and I feel they are saying the truth. It's true that I'm a liar. It's true that I'm, I'm a person who cheats. It's true that what I've done is so shameful. It's bad. Yes, they are right. But you're looking at the wrong direction. You need to look at what Christ says because he says, even when your sins are as red as scarlet, I'm willing to make them as white as wool. He says, I am coming to die for you so that if you believe in me, you shall be cleansed and made white. We have not yet died in our struggle with sin, but Jesus died. And when he died for us, he says, I want to give you a new birth and a new life where you don't have to die. I don't know who would not take that offer, my sister, if the if SARS, the tax people come to you and say, you've robbed us of taxes, we're sending you to jail. If someone comes and says, I'm prepared to pay all his debts, why would you refuse that offer and prefer to go to jail? Jesus is saying today, my death on the cross is a guarantee that when you believe in me, though you may die, yet I will raise you up at the last end. So don't be worried when Jesus allows us to be tested. That is the way he has determined for us to be saved. So today I just want to pray with someone who says, Melusi, I had given up my race. Mm -hmm. I had hanged my boots as for this Christ another day. Let me assure mm -hmm. you, my friends, there's no other way. Christ is the only hope we have. In him, when we accept him, there is power to overcome. You have lived a life of sin, yes, but in Christ you are a victor. You have been swindling people of their money, yes, but in Christ you have everything. 
Let us therefore run this race by faith. Believing that our mistakes are taken care of. God is making things right for us. We will overcome. And that's the message for today. That's the message for today. We have so many people we can look to who have overcome. Even in our modern day, there are many people who can share with you what Christ has done through them. The Bible is not done being written. That's why when you see Matthew when the new dispensation came, Look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ and you will tell me, my sister, your sins are not as bad as those people. There is hope for you today that Christ can deliver you. And that's the message I want to tell somebody out there and that we, we pray together that this too is a theater of grace. Heaven is watching how you react to how you have been attacked. There is power. There is grace enough. Choose Christ today. And be delivered. Amen. 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 Brother, when you are sharing about the struggles. Mm. And the difficulties. And the questions that sometimes arise when we are going through that. Mm. You mentioned Job. When you are going through all the, the, the heroes of faith. Yes. And you mentioned Job. And I have often wondered about the story of Job. And... Mm. You know, we've, we've, we've heard people talking about how God tests us and God tests us. But a lot of times, sometimes we, we make the mistake of thinking God is testing us testing us so that he can know mm. we're faithful. Mm. But he knows already. Absolutely. Absolutely. He knows. He knew the outcome of, of Job's <laughs> test. The test. So I always yes. wondered, so what was Job's uh, benefit? What did he gain from all this? I don't know what Job gained, but what I know is that his story mm. has become one that we, in our day and age, can look back on. And mm. God is faithful. And so, whoever is going through something, sometimes you don't know that your mm. story is, is going to bless people in the future. It's going to bless the people looking at you, the people around mm. you. God already knows the outcome of your story. Mm. And he's not going to put anything on you that's too big for you. Just like with Job, he knew that Job, he can handle this. Job, you're preaching it now. They, you, you're and preaching it. God is it. not going 100%. God, God will give you something that you, he'll give you the strength to bear it. And then it will be a testimony like Brother Melissa said. Absolutely. Be a testimony for those around you. Absolutely. In fact, let me tell our listeners that there are conversations God is having about your name in the corridors of heaven with Satan, and he's setting you up for a trial. He's saying, have you seen my beloved servant, Sister Lungile? Have you seen my beloved servant, Brother so and so he is bragging about you before the enemy and he says, I'm giving you the chance to go and test him and see. So when we fail on our trial, we are not just failing ourselves, but we are failing the grace of God and making the cross of Christ of none effect. That's why we must stand. Unfortunately, God does not owe us any explanation. That's why my sister, when... When Abel was murdered by Cain, God did not even protest. Because he knew Cain is mine, I'll raise him up at the end. But when Cain, the sinner, protested over his punishment, God actually convened a conversation with, 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 uh, with Cain. And God even actually protected the sinner from being killed. So the grace of God is that when we stand for him, he will stand with us. He is not afraid to let us go into a trial because he has confidence in us. So I know someone out there might be saying, has God given me his confidence over my trial? Absolutely. Do you need strength to stand where others have fallen? Oh yes, that's what this broadcast is about. So that after you have done all things, you may be able to stand. That's why... The revelation closes by saying, These are they who came out of great tribulation, and they washed their robes in the blood of the lamp and made, it, made them clean, and hence they are standing in the presence of God. Mm. Your trial is for the washing of your garment to be white. Amen. 
so that you can stand before God and join the cloud of witnesses of Hebrews chapter 11. So the heroes of faith chapter is not yet complete without your story, my sister and my brother. We need to have our story registered with the courtyard of heaven. And God is looking for you today to make that choice to stand with Christ. Amen. 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 Please pray for the people out there who are listening to this and who need uh, that word of encouragement. Amen. And just that extra strength that comes from God to get through the trials and tribulation that test our faith. Amen. Before I pray, I just want to tell someone that it's all by faith. Let your faith be known that you believe that there is God. To our listeners, let's bow our heads wherever we are as we pray. If you're driving, keep looking on that road as we drive. Father God in heaven, thank you that we are not left alone. There is a reason for the test. There is a reason for the trial. For when we are tested, You have confirmed that you will give us a testimony of your victory. Help us this afternoon to surrender to you, to surrender to your ways, to stand faithful to your calling, faithful to your word, and true to the blood of Jesus. I'm praying for our listener out there right now. They have suffered much. They are in pain. They are going through the worst experience of their lives. But right now, Father... I thank you for the assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ. That in him, in his suffering, we too can be sanctified and cleansed and receive the promise of life and victory over our circumstances. Father, I pray at this moment that may you not leave us alone. Be with us, O Father, and by faith help us to understand that you created this world and by your faith it is held in place and that our lives will be held in place if we place them in your care. Father, help us that through faith we may see what you are doing in our lives. Sometimes it's difficult, it's dark around us, but we pray, O Lord, that may you help us in the darkness of our trial that we may believe that joy shall come in the morning. The sun shall rise again. Bless our listeners and bless this broadcast and bless all who are involved in bringing it to our homes. May your will be done and may your grace be upon us. May May you cause your face to shine upon us and give us peace and quietness and hope that it shall be well because we believe And we call upon the name of the Lamb, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for a powerful, powerful word right there, giving us that encouragement that we need in, in this difficult time. Amen. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you.